Hey, what's good, everybody? Welcome to another live session with The Hype Magazine. I'm your editor-in-chief, Jerry Doby, and today, 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 I have the distinct pleasure of having with me a young lion. I call him young. You see the gray, the difference in the gray, right? He's a young lion who's been in the business for 30 years, three decades, and he's an amazing person by the name of Darren Henson. I didn't know that he was a choreographer. He's worked with Michael Jackson. I just know that I make my wife turn the TV when he's on the screen because he's got them smoky eyes and he starts trouble in my household. <laughs> but he's an amazing, amazing, talented person. He's a choreographer, actor, director, producer, and an author. And uh, also, he's got this amazing T-shirt line that I love, um, God's uh, Billboards. Dot com. You can go get them. Mr. Darren Henson, thank you so much. Greetings, Jerry. It's good to be on with you, and, and thank you for the compliments. <laughs> Amazing. I tell the truth. I give credit where credit is due. It's, you know, uh, one thing for the award shows to tell us that we're great, but it's also, you know, our base sometimes need to remind us that we are great, and we appreciate you, uh, yeah. you know, because Denzel Washington I, says, God gives the rewards, people give awards. Okay. I work, I work with it. I work with that. You yes, know, sir. I like that, sir. So look, you've been interviewed probably by everybody that cat uncle and dog in the media. I'm sure you've been asked all the same questions, and I'm not gonna go there with you today. I want to start with a, a reflective or introspective, if I may, from the inside looking out. Could you talk to us about the creator, the amazing person that is Darren Henson? Yeah, um, as as much as possible. Um, I think, first of all, that's a great question. Um, and, and my answer to that would be yes. Um, I simply believe in turning off all the colorful noise, quieting myself, and hearing from, from my heart um, what it is that I want to do. If we're speaking about the past, it was dance. Um, during that maturation, it became choreography, which resulted in me working with some of the most popular entertainers in the world, Michael Jackson, Prince, George Michael, uh, Britney Spears, NSYNC, J-Lo, Christina Aguilera, um, Deborah Cox, um, and um, it allowed me to be challenged and rise to the occasion. Uh, when you're responsible for people's movements mm. that, that record companies have put hundreds of thousands of dollars behind and possibly millions, it's it's a position where to whom much is given, much is required. And so, you know, I took on that responsibility very early, early in my 20s. And so I learned what responsibility was really about, and it's responding to your ability. Mm. Yes, indeed. And so, yeah. Okay. May I know, do you recall the defining moment that made you jump and take the leap into the entertainment industry as a profession. Everybody's had their previous life, but there's that moment, you know, I am on my second career, having retired from the military. Here I am as a journalist. You came from your background to jump into dance first as a dancer, street dancer and things like that. And then you, you became a professional and, and well sought after heavily sought after professional. What made you take the leap? Do you remember? Yeah, um, fear. Um, I just use fear against itself. Mm. Most people fear and never get started. I feared not getting started. And so I just did. I jumped in with both feet. And it was in high school that I had my first professional job. I was blessed enough to meet by happenstance um, but it was it was divine. Uh, Scott Sterling, who the world would know as DJ Scott LaRock, mm. he, was still in, he was still in college. Um, I was in DeWitt Clinton High School in the Bronx. 
And the theater workshop teacher that had recognized my talent, her name um, was Sandra Scottnick. And she asked me to go to Cal State State College by request um, from a student that had graduated from Clinton who went on to Castleton State mm. and they they were looking for street dancers. So she asked me to choose two people. We were going to get paid like $125 each, which was huge money at the time when uh. I was 16. And we did it. And at that time in the college, the, the, the DJ, who was a senior at that time, was Scott Sterling, DJ Scott LaRock. So I did my first professional job. The first time I was paid um, as a dancer was at Castleton State College. And at that time, after that event, Scott LaRock became my mentor um, and my first manager. Oh, wow. What history. That's history that nobody can replace. That's a yeah. million dollar education. So you came up when there really weren't real managers and no record labels were really rocking with hip hop at the time and street dancers weren't accepted as true professionals, even though you had delivered all the intricacies and nuances of, you know, the, the ballerinas and whatever. Stompers. And, 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 you know, I, I have to, I have to speak to that because I was very happy early on that I was taught professional means you get paid for your work. Right. And so I became a professional at 16 and I stood on that. And I and I and I knew that and I didn't allow anybody to take that from me. So, as I said, I was blessed early with education of what is and what could be. Mm. And you have the intestinal fortitude to go forward and, you know, butt heads with whoever wanted to butt heads. And you said, I can show you better than I could tell you. F around and find out. Here I am. And we're 30 years later. And you've got some magnificent credits. Um, and not only that, through your other uh, roles in life, you're helping people to provide for their families as well um, as a director, producer, and things like that. But most famously, we have to start it off. You know, uh, Mr. Henson here is on Carl Weber's The Family Business every Tuesday at 9 p.m., Eastern on BET. Actually, it's every Thursday now, so it's switched up. It's 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 on Thursdays. We're in the fourth season. Okay, that's an that's an honest mistake. A lot of changes always happen at BET, but um, we're on BET Plus for the fourth season, and then next year, um, the the episodes that are playing on BET Plus will be on the regular BET station. I know it's a lot to think about and remember, but. Again, there's so many different platforms right now, but yeah, we are in the fourth season of the family business of me playing Orlando Duncan. You know, congratulations on that. It's difficult in these days and age. I mean, gone is the time when there's a 20 year series. You know what I mean? <laughs> and yeah. so, so having four years in is an amazing uh, run, especially, well, thank goodness that we have um, outlets for our uniform, you know, these days. Yes, sir. Uh, that respect what we bring to the table and and allow us to to show and and the next generation that we don't have to be uh, behind the microphone. We don't have to be the thugs and the villains. We can be businessmen. We can be people who are thoughtful with critical thinking skills. You guys bring something different to the screen as a collective. Um, yes, you know it's adult but at the same time even as adults i think early on when i you know i went into the military at 17 when i went into the military there weren't shows that showed groups of black business minded people no matter what of uh, the industry that were thinking about plots and subplots and and things like that they weren't presented that way and uh, i'm 59 now so i'm like really happy that things have changed and well you know I, I believe you can't be what you can't see so we must strive forward we must seek those faces that we desire to become like and i've been blessed you know i've had as a series soul food um 
Lincoln Heights, mm-hmm. of course, the family business, which is all about family. And not not only that, but I'm, you know, the other show that I'm on, which is Double Cross, yes, um, which is on the All Black Network, is a series where I play a detective who's a concerned father, and he's concerned about the environment um, that his his daughter um, is living in at this time. And so, like family business and Double Cross, again, it's about family over everything. And so I'm, I'm very lucky and very blessed um, to not only have one show, but two shows that are hit shows on both networks. And so I'm not, um, I don't take it lightly at all, the responsibility that I have um, in, in the public eye, uh, which is why, you know, it's important for me to have these conversations so people can hear from me Darren DeWitt Henson, not just the actor in the role. Because when I'm in the role, that's not my voice. It's the writer's voice. But this is my voice. And that's why it's important to do interviews um, like we're doing right now. I would like to turn it from an interview to a conversation and, and let you take the lead. We have like a certain level of, of questions that we'll ask and things like that. I would like to know what is the question that we as journalists have neglected to ask you over the years that you might have wanted to answer? What is your why? Mm. Okay. I'm asking it. What is your why? Why do you do what, is, what is your why? And my why is because I experienced so much heartache as a child, um, getting put out of our homes. Um, I experienced a lack of male um, intelligence being Mm. in the household. Um, I considered, uh, you know, the fear of not doing the best that I can do and what that looks like. And so my why is because I learned that if I don't, there is no help coming. Mm. See, I love it. There is no help coming. And so I had to learn, as I said, the responsibility, respond to my ability of knowing very early on what I could do. Muhammad Ali, when he was on a run one time, a person that was running with him was like, you know, when you get tired, you gotta stop, you gotta slow down. And Muhammad Ali said, no. He said, I run until my throat gets dry. I run beyond, and I'm paraphrasing, my comfort zone. I'm running and I'm training. And, and and when I've given all of that and can't move anymore, it's probably only 50% of what I'm capable of. Mm-hmm. And so I've taken on the mindset is, I don't stop when I'm tired. I stop when the job is done. I stop asking the questions. I stop taking the action. I stop uh, wondering once the job is done, but once that job is done, I realize it, I acknowledge it, I pat myself on the back, I say, great job, Darren, and then I go back to asking new and better questions. Mm. Because if our lives are made up of the questions that we ask, then our job is to ask better questions. I love it. I'm so glad we're having this conversation. I am, you know, it took me a long time to acknowledge it's okay to say that you're great at something. Um, what was your moment when you said, you know what? I don't need, because um, I, I really like the t-shirt. It says I'm already validated. You know what I mean? That was, that was a huge one for me and we'll get there in a minute. But what was your moment? Do you recall when you said, you know what? It's okay for me to be happy with myself and my accomplishments and 
recognize that I am skillful. I am great at what I do. When I stopped asking for validation from other people that couldn't possibly give me what I was looking for, and I was 18 years old, mm. I, once I graduated high school, I left. And I left, actually, I left home when I was 16. And it was the best thing for me to do because my home atmosphere was not conducive of a positive mindset. Mm. Um, and so I left at 16 and moved in with my best friend um, and his mom and his brother. And may she rest in peace, um, Miss Lois. She said, um, you got to graduate high school, though. You can stay here, but you have to graduate. And I said, yes, ma'am, and I will. And when I did, I, I went away and I worked and I traveled as an entertainer, as a dancer for one year. And then the following year, um, I lived in Japan um, as a dancer and an entertainer. So when I decided to leave, it was because I knew at that age that I had become a man at 16 years old and I was taking care of myself. I, didn't, I wasn't paying for the roof over my head, but when I say take care of myself, meaning all the decisions that I was gonna make at that point was what were gonna shape my life. And I knew that. Mm. And so, when I went to work um, in America for a year, traveling, touring, and then the following year, I lived in Japan. I got to learn to speak Japanese. I spoke Spanish. I traveled throughout Japan as an entertainer. Um, I built relationships, cultivated myself through um, studying and reading, as well as practicing my craft. And when I came back home, I was ready to show the world who I was becoming and what I intended to do. Done a great job. And, you know, salute to you for being that self-aware at that age. It's a rarity and more so a rarity in this day and age of babies raising babies. So for you to have been that aware, you know, is a salute to those who had the strength and insight to put on you those tasks that you needed to do to develop yourself. And then for you to accept those tasks and realize you'd accomplished and could move forward on your own without waiting for anybody else to put the boot there. So this is a, a, a great example and a great story for young people growing up. I don't mean to, <clears throat> you know, bore you. But uh, I think that your your beginning um, is so interesting. Beyond the screen, the man is, you know, more interesting to conversate with than the character. So uh, because the man that you are has character in reality, as opposed to that which you're playing. So thank you um, for allowing me uh, that, that bit of entree. So Besides the, the family business, you've got an upcoming documentary and you're doing some directorial projects. Can we talk about uh, the documentary first? Absolutely. It, it's something to me that was very pra you know, pragmatic. And it, it, to me, it's, it's again, it's about the why. So people saw what I did as a choreographer. They um, relished in the creativity that was provided for the performances. Um, but now I wanted to tell them how I got there and why. And so that's what the documentary is about. It's, it's, it's about my why and it's about my life and how it all unfolded. Mm. And, you know, the information um, is provided to them for inspiration and activation within themselves because you can be inspired, but you you also have to be activated, right? You can't just be inspired and do nothing. You have to be inspired and activated to get a result. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so that's that's what the 
the documentary, which people will see next year um, when it comes out, you know, on on television, um, what it's about. Do we have a, a title that you share, a working title, or is that under wraps? Yeah, it's it's. I I can I can tell you the second half of the the documentary. It's blank blank blank, the untold Darren Henson story. Okay, I'm get out with that. <laughs> I'll get out with that. I I mean, uh, when you're at your level, I know that projects are are really sensitive. And you know, information, the NDAs and things are flying yes. out. So yes. <laughs> I, I got you. Um, directorial debut. You're doing some behind the scenes things. Um, talk to us about those projects, what you can share. And um, we would love to just know more and support anything that you're doing. Well, I have a, a couple of films that are completed already. One is called The Hotel which is a, um, a dance-based dramedy. I think mm. people are gonna love nationally and internationally. Um, then I have another film called A House Ain't a Home, um, which is a, a family drama um, and, and a conversation about family relationships. Mm. And then there's another one called With Your Flaws and All starring Irma P. Hall, who we know as Big Mama from Soul Food. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. That's going to be fun. I yeah. mean, I think I'm excited to see them all. And uh, of course, you know, television, well, I don't care if it's on streaming. Uh, if I've got to pay for a subscription, I'm going to, I'm going to be supporting. Yeah, it's a, it, these films are films that the family experience will enjoy individually and collectively. Okay. Okay. I, what is the most satisfying for you about what you do? To have an idea and realize it to its manifestation. So it goes from thoughts to things. So from an idea to the manifestation of it, which means producing it all the way through. Mm. That's exciting to me, to see something come out of the ether, knowing that it was in the ether, in the ether, excuse me, an idea which gets birthed into manifestation. It's really exciting. So may I ask, and it's none of my business, please feel free to tell me it's none of my business. Um, but these projects that you're also directing, are you responsible from, for them from inception to completion? You finance them, you cast well, them? Well, no, we, we have, I would be remiss not to talk about, you know, my partnerships. Um, sometimes we have uh, executives that come in and, and, you know, I may start it off financially and they'll come in and, and assist, you know, as executive producers. Um, so it's it's a collective effort. I think when people see that you're doing things yourself, if you're willing to do that, then they'll help you. So, you know, we, we I, I never look for handouts. I come with viable projects and we start them and sometimes we need help finishing them. But, uh, you know, as a, as a collective group, we're, we're getting it done. Some of the projects I did completely on my own. Um, all the way to distribution and some, yes, um, mm -hmm. we we have people that come in and is, as executive producers and assist us to finishing the projects. Mm -hmm. So throughout your 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 decades um, in the business, you got a chance to learn everything from camera angles to distribution, producing what it looks like and feels like to be in the writer's room, to create the story, adjust the story um casting etc what in this process is the most fun for you um probably acting in it now right before it used to be dancing in it creating it and seeing artists wear what you've created it was like suits right you you made for each artist and not every artist wears the same size right so it was 
it was wonderful watching my creativity on people. And now it's, you know, creating characters like Orlando Duncan, you know, Carl Weber created the characters in the book, but we birthed them on screen. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, when it, when it comes to work that I've written and directed, it's seeing it on screen and knowing people are watching it. So that's the exciting part. So, you know, that's, that's forthcoming now. Um, and I'm, I'm really excited about the possibilities of millions of people, you know, seeing and commenting and just all of it, all of it, you know? Mm. Okay. Got an exciting future. Can you tell me what maybe has been one of the most poignant interactions you've had with a fan, somebody who's approached and says, you know what, your delivery here uh, changed my life or something that you've written or said made that difference with me, want, from me wanting to end it all to me wanting to drive on and move forward? Well, it's it's happened a lot in my life, to be honest. When I was on Soul Food, I had people who were, you know, unfortunately in prison mm -hmm. um, who told me they used to watch the show and, and the show got them through it. They would tell me, like, you're playing me, you know, the character Lem Van Adams. Mm -hmm. And it, it was so amazing, you know, to, to hear that. Um, then other people in choreography and dance, they saw interviews that I did. And there were people who said that they were going to commit suicide. And when they saw an interview that I did, couple of times I've had people say this, um, an interview I did on MTV, it stopped them when they, they heard the transparency of why I was choreographing and what I was doing. Um, and that, that's so like heart touching to me. Um, or where people, you know, commented on Stomp the Yard, how they wanted to go to college because of the Stomp the Yard film and, mm -hmm. and, and, and join college when they never desired to go to college or how in the movie Black Coffee, you know, created a, a opportunity for them to create new conversations in their relationships, to better their relationships, or, or forgive people. You know, um, you know the, the television series, uh, The Family Business, um, where, where people really are, are talking about developing themselves as entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. um, or, it, you know, if they've had hardships with their family, how they now talk it out. Mm -hmm. um, the Double Cross series, how people feel like, you know, there are things that happen in their lives and they're not always easy, but they know winter doesn't last forever. And so they don't get stuck in it now. And so those conversations have been consistent throughout my career. And they're just, um, they can be breathtaking. And, and, and put me in a perspective of, of introspection, which creates a new why. Mm. There's always another why. Yeah. Waiting for you around the corner. Yes. And uh, that's what makes life exciting, I think. And you can appreciate each and every day more and more. If you're present, you know what I mean? Uh, yes, sir. If you're present and not just gliding down the path, you know what I mean? That's right. Um, as you navigated the maze of this business, what was the most surprising for you about the business side? Now, you started young, so it's probably unfair to even ask you that question. But you've been in, you know, you, you've gone through these different levels and different stages of the business. So there's had to be one that, you didn't see coming. The, 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 the business part of it is like, wow, it's, it, it can be cutthroat. It can be like being a little fish in a big ocean with sharks. Mm. Um, it can be incredibly demanding without immediate return. Um, it can be painful um, through, uh, I think, lack of honor. Mm. Um, 
And, but with that being said, all of that, I think shows up to help you to grow. You know, I have a, I have a shirt um, with my God's billboard t-shirts company that says, go through it, grow through it, glow through it. Yes. And so the resistance that we deal with when we learn from it, it makes us smarter, stronger, and helps us to rise. So I never look at those things that might be, you know, difficult as something that showed up to break me. It showed up to teach me a lesson. So I believe the lessons and the blessings happen exactly at the same time. They're mm -hmm. not a lesson or a blessing. They're both. Yeah. You know what? Uh, it's a, that, that brings a different dimension to for every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction, reaction. the yin and the yang. You know sure. what I mean? For every light side, there's a dark side. You can't have the light side without the dark side. It, it life just doesn't 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 work that way. I yeah, am so honored to to have you let me in um, and let our audience in this way and share your your experiences and your wisdom if you had to motivate someone today knowing how do i want to the tangled web that is coming at us from all angles and we've got to save this young person uh maybe they're not at the point of you know ending it all you know, suicide. We're we're approaching suicide prevention month, and uh, very important topic. And it it used to be when I was coming up um, that suicide was not a topic that was really dealt with uh, within the black community, and it's becoming more pervasive. Um, there were certain things, you know, my mother and my grandmother said, "No, you know, that's them other people. That's not what we do." Uh, there were a lot of things supposedly that we didn't do. That's not a reality um, or it is changing, but we're saving a young person. We're motivating them right now. We've got two minutes to do it. What would you bust out? Man? To be honest, brother, the only thing that I can say about that right now is I have to live my life in truth mm -hmm. and I value the truth of my life. And I think the t-shirts say it most. I'm already validated by the most high. I don't need other people's approval. I am more than enough and I approve this message. And we go through it to grow through it, to glow through it. And the other t-shirt says, I'm a spiritual warrior. I fight my battles through prayer. And what that simply means, if I wanted to add on to that is you must have faith that things will change. You have to keep walking. Dr. Martin Luther King said, if you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, crawl. Mm -hmm. Just keep moving forward. And so that's that's what I say to people is just keep moving forward. This too shall pass one foot at a time, you know, and hopefully my life is one of those spaces and places where people find it says, seek and ye shall find, that they find inspiration and then they take action. And the action enough will change a circumstance from where it is to where it can go. I love it. I, I love it. I love the t-shirts. I am definitely going to support. I don't know uh, if there's uh, a charity that's, you know, a recipient of any of the a benefit of any of this, but... I'm going to have a, a full closet of everything that looks manly. Uh, I might not wear the glow through it, but the other ones, you know, I would. I, I'm I'm going to have a closet full. Thank you. Well, in in all honesty, you know, it's it's a business, but I tell people all the time, and people have seen this. Uh, my wife and I, you know, we feed the hungry and the homeless. I would never say it's a full charitable. Um, business at all but we are blessed and we do know that um there's different ways that you tithe and mm -hmm. so that's that's one of the ways that we do it and so yes um 
Yeah. Okay. I, I I didn't mean to like get into your business like that. I no, just, no, no, it's fine. I don't I just don't want people thinking that and and you're not the first person, but uh you know, we people have seen us feed the hungry and the homeless, you know, they've seen it and we have taken the proceeds um from the shirts and done that, you know. And I think that when you are blessed, then if if you have the ability to do something, then you you do it. And so we thank everybody for their support and you know, we, we always do what we can. And the more that we have, the more we can give. I declare that I am a spiritual warrior. I fight my battles through prayer. That's that's a big one, you know. Uh, I grew up with that. I lived a different life. But uh, this brings me back to my foundation. You know? Yes, sir. And uh, I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, it is... God's Billboard T-shirts, or yes, dot com. You can find them on Instagram as well. God's dot Billboard shirts. Check them out. Um, you can also buy soon, I think, um, the the merchandise with uh, Ethereum or Bitcoin with cryptocurrency. Right? Has that begun yet? Or well, well, what we've done. I was, you know, I, I like staying in touch with my audience, so. Uh, we have been doing classes on what cryptocurrency is um, for the last couple of years. You know, I've been involved in the market for quite some time. And so we teach people the education the same way I was teaching acting classes um, online. I, I just stay in touch with my audience and I let them know that education is the key, is, is really the key to freedom. And so... Yeah, if anybody has any questions about cryptocurrency, you know, I share my knowledge. Um, my books are also on God's Billboard t-shirts. So if anybody wants to read any of the books that I have authored, Intimate Thoughts, um, Ain't That the Truth or Life's Teachable Moments, they're all there. And, um, you know, we 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 just, uh, we love our people and we, we love our fans and, um, I'm just I'm really thankful for everybody that supports my brand or any film, television show or uh, book that that I've written or or company that that I have that uh, they support. I'm, I'm thankful um, for them and to them. Man, is there anything that you want to cover that I may have neglected? I would like, you know, to make sure that we get all the juice out of the meat and I want to, you to feel um I, I honestly want to say thank you to you and everybody that will watch this, everybody that will um, eat from this and may this apply and quantify in their lives to do the service that they desire. Um, thank you to Mr. Defy Gravity, Ivan. Um, I, I just appreciate him so much. Um, and uh, thank you and keep watching because uh, we're just getting warmed up. Okay. I got one last question because the books all look so amazing. They're reasonably priced. Everything I'm, I'm a lot of people don't think to have a central point for all their merchandise and things. That's one of the details that's uh, very impressive. Uh, one of the books that I would like to point out to gentlemen, Intimate Thoughts and the Spirit of Change. Sometimes we're too hard for ourselves and we're, it makes us unavailable. Um, <clears throat> to those that need us and there's some changes that do need to be made and we need to be a uh, willing and strong enough to do those i think this is a uh, you know an amazing book to not just put on your table and have the shelf because it's got a great uh piece of artwork on there it's really something that we can study and apply uh i know that uh after coming back from, you know, my fifth deployment and and coming back into humanity, so to speak, that, you know, there were there were things that I wasn't ready to deal with, but I needed to deal with them. And I think intimate thoughts was one of the things I didn't have intimate thoughts. I, I had I had a whole different set of, you know, I, my life had been changed. Let me just say that. Um, but to avail ourselves and to allow ourselves to have intimate thoughts thoughts about and it's not about sex you know what i mean it's it's about correct connection and reaching out and touching 
mentally and spiritually as not and not just physically it, it it's, it's deeper um deeper than the music like I, I i like to say when i'm talking to an artist um but this is a book that you know take it from old head it's a great book this young man has put together it means something and it's a great guide and we should check it out so check out the book section godsbillboardshirts.com this is you know mr darren dewitt Henson, and he is amazing multifaceted um person who contributes to the fabric of our community in positive manners and um i want to thank you for your time i can't say thank you enough and i wish to be here and a, a tool and a resource for you um for any subjects that you might want to push forward in the future you have a friend here at the hype magazine as long as i'm alive brother you have an ally and i'll do everything in my power to support thank you keep doing what you're doing i wish you much continued success shout out to your wife as well y'all check out them awards back there you see that moon man <laughs> the moon man and the and the what are the that's statues the, with the globes now i have to that, ask that's you. um those those are here uh these are awards that i won the hopper awards um, that I won for Best Actor in the TV Series for Family Business. And um, this other one is uh, Best Actor in an Independent Film that I won for a film called Happiness. Okay. So, you know, just, just mounting them up. And that's my, oh, that's my MTV Music Award back there, the Moon Man back there. And these are the NSYNC dolls because I created the NSYNC Bye 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 dance. So just mm -hmm. my, you know. Okay. Yeah, I, I know. See, I, I didn't ask about those earlier because you're you're not a, a surface level cat. And I, I uh just wanted to throw them in there to have a little fun and let people know that you know the brother seriously has done the work <laughs> and <laughs> seriously has done the work and changed lives for over three decades. Um he's changed lives, careers, contributed to those, and he continues to do that um as well today so i really appreciate you i salute you and until next time blessings thank you so much god bless peace, peace.